gang, show by Platt back with another value spirit video. Today, the particular spirit we have is the Real McCoy single blended rum, aged three years. Um, price wise, comes in at $19.99, so $20, uh, which is uh, again pretty good value out there in the spirit world. Um, a little bit of background the term Real McCoy. I'm sure practically everyone's out, out there has heard the term the Real McCoy. It refers to the genuine article or the real thing. Uh, generally, if you hear someone say that's the real McCoy, they're kind of making a statement on, on quality, whatever. So, uh, like I said, if you hear that, you know, you know it's good. Uh, there's really no set origin to the term the real McCoy. Uh, several people claim to have been the original real McCoy. There's also other people that had used the term uh, before. It is believed to be a variation on a Scottish term, the real McKay, uh, probably depending on which clan you're from in Scotland, whether you use McKay or McCoy, kind of depends. Uh, in the literary world, it was first used in a poem in 1856, and then down the line you'd seen it become the real McCoy. Uh, several people, like I said, have claimed to be the original real McCoy. Uh, there was a gentleman in the 1930s, in the uh, early 40s that was a, a pioneer in the radio he was a pioneering radio host uh, a gentleman named George the real McCoy uh, I believe he was also a early World War II correspondent out in the field what have you um, in the late 1800s early 1900s there was a gentleman that was mayor of Can Abilene Kansas uh, Joseph McCoy referred to himself as the real McCoy and in the early 1900s there was a boxer Kid McCoy, who again also used the phrase, or sports writers would also refer to him as the real McCoy. So like I said, several people have uh, taken credit for that name, including the gentleman this rum is uh, named after. Um, the story behind this rum, the company was founded by a gentleman named Bailey Pryor. Bailey is the CEO of the company. He originally started out, or his story was he was a producer for public television. And he had gotten a sign, uh, got an assignment to do a documentary about a gentleman named Bill McCoy. Now, who, who was Bill McCoy? Bill McCoy was a famous bootlegger during the Prohibition era. And while Bailey was researching this documentary, he went down to the Caribbean, started meeting rum uh, producers, kind of getting the whole story, not just Bill's story, but the whole story of rum and the bootlegger. And he, got real enamored with that and uh, again got to know some of these producers including the people at uh, I believe it is Foursquare Distillery which produced the product now thus the birth of the real McCoy rum. Now Bill's story was like I said he was a famous bootlegger and he was famous for a couple different reasons. One of the things he did was he would sail up from the Caribbean along the East Coast and bring his product to the big cities like New York, Boston, etc. What he did that was real smart was he stayed, he, he would park his boat three miles offshore in international waters. So he didn't have to worry about the police or the feds confiscating anything. Uh, what he did was he would park his boat offshore and then whatever local gangster in the town that was getting the product from him would send his guys out to go get the product. And they're the ones that had to dodge the cops and everything else. So pretty smart by Bill. Also something else Bill did smart was he always had a top quality product. Now if you know anything about the Prohibition era, a lot of people produced rot gut booze, they would you know cut cut it with water to save a few bucks or God forbid there's people that use wood alcohol that was big in things like bathtub gin and whatever. But Bill avoided that. He didn't cut his stuff down with water, he only brought the best quality product and because of that he got a premium price and he also in a roundabout way, became the first branded bootlegger in the sense that they knew he took pride in his product and that thus he got a, a better dollar for it, which uh, again makes sense. So, that, But that's a story on uh, the rum itself. Um, several positive reviews out there I found. A uh, magazine or a website called Inside Look rates this as one of the best cheap rums available. And again, $20. I think you could classify it as a cheap rum. Uh, Vine Pear rates this as one of the best rums under $25. The Thrillist lists this as one of the best rums under $35. Uh, one of the nine best rums under $35. And they even 
kind of specifically mentioned that they think this is a great room as a base for tiki drinks, which I can see makes sense. And last but not least, a website called Flavor rates this as one of the best rums under $50. And that's kind of impressive thinking that this is a $20 bottle of rum and it's competing against $40 and $50 bottles of rum. It's still up there. So that, uh, that is definitely a positive sign. Well, enough about the rum. Let's give her a try. Now, first thing, you probably can't tell on camera, but this is not perfectly clear. This is not like a Bacardi that almost looks like vodka. There's a little bit of color. You, you get a hint when you hold it up to the light. Um, like I said, it's been aged three years, but a lot of these style rums, they'll kind of filter out the color, but you still pick up the flavor. Let's... All right, smells nice. Not too hot on the nose. Oh, wow, that is good. Yeah. You know, when I was writing up this uh, review or, or doing some research, I thought this style of rum is pretty hard to pull off because it's not the Bacardi style clear rum, which kind of gets lumped into the other white spirits like vodka and gin. Those, you're just wanting the cleanest product possible. You're not necessarily wanting, like vodka, you don't even want any real flavor. You just want, want something clean. And you think about Bacardi, well, I'm throwing that Coke, I'm throwing that Mojito. I'm throwing... Again, the, the flavor is not quite important. But it is an aged rum, which then kind of puts you in the other extreme where you're going up against Appleton's, the Mount Gaze, whatever, and those, you want that flavor. You want to get that wood, what have you. And... Those are something you actually would enjoy on the rocks, or maybe just a splash of soda water. This type of rum, the lightly aged rum, kind of has to play the best of both worlds, but it's a tough dance to pull off because people will just look at this bottle and like, all right, I'm putting it in a Coke, I'm putting it in a pina colada. This rum, though, has enough flavor that I could, I could drink it with soda. I could drink it. I could drink that neater on the rocks. It's really really nice the the wood you know the, that that wood and vanilla whatever that you pick up aging it it's there but it's light uh the body's still light but it's smoothed it out like a, a, a really clean raw spirit has a you know an aggressive bite to it because again you, you don't have the other flavors you didn't have the time and wood to mellow it out this is something that's nice mellow but still clean on your palate but has flavor which, which is a, just a nice uh, little balancing act. And they have pulled that off nicely. Um, I don't know if I'd necessarily want to throw that in a Coke or whatever because it has, uh, you know, too much flavor. But a mojito, I guarantee that'd be top-notch in. And like I said, I can throw that into, like, maybe a lighter lemon-lime, you know, uh, or one of these, like, flavored sodas. I can, I can see that happen. Well, I hope you liked this video. If you did, please subscribe down below. Also, please like the video because it lets YouTube know we're putting out good content. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, please leave them in the comment section. Or you can always contact me on the Twitter page. Till next time, bottoms up.